back now to uh, Venezuela, which we were just talking about. About a, After a week of discoveries, have unveiled a, an extensive network of paramilitary activities at Venezuela's border, as well as massive smuggling of basic goods. And President Nicolas Maduro has extended the closure of various border crossings with Colombia. Now, Maduro says there is evidence that the opposition, the political opposition, is working with paramilitaries to destabilize the country. He also says that Colombian paramilitaries have received about $32,000 to carry out an attack against Venezuelan troops at the border. Colombian and Venezuelan officials are expected to meet this Wednesday to discuss the situation. We are looking for a new border. The border is rotten. It is rotten. We are the victims of capitalism the paramilitary capitalist model of the Colombian right. And we're going to turn live now to uh, Zoe Duca. He's a journalist who right now is in Venezuela, and she's at another border crossing, the one with Brazil, where also some illicit activity also uh, takes place. Uh, Zoe, thanks so much for joining us. Just to start, I'm wondering if you can just talk about the situation uh, in Venezuela with respect to the border and paramilitary activity and how are these paramilitaries affecting uh, the political and social life of the country as a result of cross-border attempts to create uh, instability in here in Venezuela? Hi, yes. So, absolutely, um, this is an issue on the border with Colombia. Uh, paramilitaries, as we know, have long protected right-wing interests and landowners in Colombia. And to the best of my knowledge, uh, the first registered a paramilitary presence in that area in 1997. Uh, uh, since 2002, there has been an increase of more direct um, paramilitary uh, aggression towards the Venezuelan socialist government. There was a video that was released in 2002 of the United Self Defense Forces of Venezuela, which is 100% a group that has based itself on the Colombian paramilitary model. Um, and it's unlikely that this group was formed organically. There's plenty of speculation about ties to the right-wing leaders in Venezuela and in Colombia. And at this point, authorities have estimated at least 30 different paramilitary groups active throughout the country, with the largest concentration being on the border. Um, and while, third, you know, of these 30 groups, many of them may be working for their own profit, some of them are engaged in mafia-like businesses such as smuggling and express kidnapping. But there is evidence that others have been hired to direct their aggressions towards socialist leaders. The assassinations of Robert Serra and Eliasa Otaiza last year are the most high-profile examples of this, but there are others. And let's talk about uh, smuggling, sort of the other issue uh, there at the border. Now, it's estimated that more than 40 percent of what is uh, produced here in Venezuela or what arrives here in Venezuela at uh, subsidized prices actually ends up across the border in, in other countries. That's a huge amount. So sort of break this down for us. Why does that happen and what is this measure trying to, uh, trying to uh, stop that? Mm. Well, yes, yeah, it's quite astounding. 40% is, is huge. It has a dramatic effect on everyday life for Venezuelans. Um, it's one of the most direct causes for scarcity of basic food items that are supposed to be made accessible to Venezuelans through regulated prices, state markets. Uh, it's also causing long lines at these state markets because many of the people waiting online are not necessarily buying for themselves, but rather are looking to resell those items either on the black market or across the border. Uh, and it's not just food. We have millions of liters of gasoline um, exiting the country, getting smuggled out through Brazil, Guyana, and Colombia, and outrageous profits are being made um, because of uh, different currencies and just the fact that no one can match Venezuela's cheap gasoline price. We also are seeing this with medicine and construction materials. These are things that make up the very fabric of Venezuelan society, of any society. So, yes, it's a huge source of instability, and we are hoping that the um, state of exception that has been called in Colombia, I'm sorry, with the Colombian border, border is um, going to make a difference because, as, as, as I'm reporting here from, from the Brazilian border, and we do have smuggling, we have all kinds of smuggling, but we don't have the level of what's being seen on the border with Colombia, and I do think a huge aspect of that 
um, there's already uh, mafias, smuggling mafias that are somewhat synonymous with paramilitary groups, and and it's just become a massive illicit business on that border. So we're hoping that, um, you know, that by going after um, authorities there and resellers and smugglers, um, we're, we're hoping that it's going to stop the problem, but I, I, I would suggest you know, more emphasis on how these cycles are created rather than just the foot soldiers of the economic war. We would like to see more um, interest in, in, in the structures, the military structures and the border structures that make this possible. And Thanks. part of that is the paramilitary element. All right. Thanks so much uh, for joining us. We will certainly have to wait and see how this measure at the border um, affects uh, the availability of products here in Venezuela. Our correspondent there in the western state of Táchira reported that some people had actually started to find some products that they weren't able to find previously, but we'll have to wait and see uh, a few more days at least to see how this uh, plays out and affects the, the availability. Thanks so much for joining us. Moving